Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite makeup brushes. Now, I have not done a video like this in a really long time, so I thought it was time to update everyone on what brushes I really love using. You probably have a good idea if you watch my videos <laughs> what my favorite makeup brushes are. I use them quite often. However, I thought I would really break it down, uh, talk about brushes by application, like my favorite foundation brushes. I'm also gonna try and throw in a nice a mixture between natural hair and synthetic haired brushes. I'm personally a fan of natural hair brushes. I just think that they perform, generally they perform better than synthetic hair brushes, but I have come to love quite a few synthetic haired brushes as well. So we're gonna be talking about all of that. Um, I also wanted to talk about this uh, particular topic today because a lot of these brushes are available on Beautylish. Beautylish carries, I think, like the best and most extensive makeup brushes on their site. Um, just really gorgeous handmade brushes from Japan. Uh, they have exclusives with a lot of my favorite brush brands, as you guys know, and their uh, gift card event is starting very, very soon. I'll leave the date and the time that it's starting here if they've announced it by the time I post this video. Uh, if not, it, it is coming very, very soon. They did send out an email saying it was coming soon. I just don't want to divulge anything that they haven't already divulged. So anyway, I thought this was a good time uh, to talk about makeup brushes. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a lot of makeup brushes here. I have a lot of makeup brushes. Let's just start there. I probably have close to a thousand makeup brushes. I love, love makeup brushes. I used to uh, be really into fine arts and I painted a lot and I was really into brushes then. I just really love tools when I was a hand knitwear designer, you know, needles, all the like fun tools that you could have uh, relating to any craft is always like some of my favorite things in the entire world. So I used to have a scissor collection <laughs> when I was sewing a lot. So anyway, uh, I love, love, love brushes and I love playing with brushes. So I have a lot to talk about. Let's go ahead and start with foundation brushes. So my favorite foundation brush and I'm gonna start with the synthetic haired uh, brush, is from BK Beauty, it is their 101 brush. So here is the brush. This is actually the travel size brush, and here is the regular size brush. So the head is completely the same, it's just the handle is shorter on the travel size brush. Also, the travel size brush here is clean. <laughs> this one is dirty. If you're thinking, those two heads don't look the same. This is clean, this is dirty. Uh, so anyway, I, love, love, love this brush because it is dense. So it helps uh, apply the foundation very evenly, very smoothly, and it has this fantastic angle, as you can see. So I feel like uh, basically like the natural grip you have in your hand uh, is the angle that you want this brush to have uh, for it to glide easily over your face. It's not too straight up and down. It's not uh, flat across the top where you have to hold it this way. It's just very, very comfortable. And again, because the density of the bristles, it just makes for a nice, easy kind of glide and uh, it spreads out your foundation beautifully, evenly, and I love it. This is a staple brush in my collection. This is definitely one of those brushes, like if all of my makeup brushes were to disappear, one of the first ones I would run out and buy, this is definitely one. So happy to be starting this video off with one of my all time favorite brushes. So BK Beauty 101 brush. The other brush I want to talk about in terms of uh, foundation application is the Sonia G Jumbo Base Brush. This is an even denser brush, and this brush is a mixture of natural and synthetic haired bristles. So this has a very slight angle, so not quite as much as the BK Beauty, but also the bristles are even shorter. So this is an even denser brush, like I was saying, and uh, it's so, so soft. I mean, the BK Beauty is soft as well. This just makes for the most even um, application for any sort of cream, liquid foundation. This brush I especially love for liquid foundations. This brush I really love for liquid foundations and cream foundations. So if you have any foundations that are uh, like in a little jar or um, I'm trying to think, there's that clay de peau kind of like cream uh, matte foundation that came out, was it a couple summers ago? Anyway, any kind of like cream foundation, 
this one is great for that as well. Not that I wouldn't use the BK Beauty 101 brush, but when I think of cream foundation, I think of uh, this brush. I think this one works just a little bit better because of the density and because it can really uh, like spread out foundations very easily. So these are the two brushes I wanted to mention for foundation. Okay, next up, concealers. So again, we're gonna start with the synthetic haired um, concealer brush that I love. And again, we've got a BK Beauty one. This is the collaboration with Angie Hot and Flashy. This is the A506. And it basically is a mini, 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 mini version of their 101 brush. It has very similar shape to the head, angled, and it's the same reason why I love this concealer brush. It just makes for very easy blending. It's the perfect angle. It's this natural sort of ergonomic way that you would hold the brush. And it's wonderful, it's great, it's the perfect size too. I don't feel like it's too small or too big and it just blends concealer in perfectly. And in my example, I actually use the Clay de Peau Stick Foundation instead of my Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer because that's like a liquid uh, concealer and so that's gonna blend in fairly easily with like most brushes, but with a stick concealer, it's a little stiffer and so you need a good brush to be able to work that in and this is a really good one. Um, the other brush that I really love that I used in this example with the Clay de Peau Stick uh, Concealer is the Refer number 36. This is one of their newer brushes and it has, again, a very similar sort of shape to the BK Beauty 101. Uh, this is synthetic fibers, this is undyed goat hair, so you can use this with creams and liquids. Oh, and just to expound on that, I say that a lot and I forget that sometimes people don't understand what I'm saying. Natural hairs are uh, a lot more delicate, shall we say, than synthetic hairs. They require a little bit more care. Um, they break a little bit more easily than synthetic fibers for obvious reasons. And uh, when it comes to whether or not you can use them with uh, powder or liquid products, the types of animal hairs that you can use with liquid products have to be stronger than most because liquid, what happens is it dries on the hair and what it will do is just crack the hair off. Powders just sort of float over the hairs and it's not that big of a deal. So you can use really delicate natural hairs with powder without any worry. The what kind of hairs you can and can't use usually relate to liquid and cream products. So when it comes to Goat hair, goat is sort of, to me, it's sort of like in the middle of the road. There are hairs that are a lot softer and there are hairs that are a, a lot more resilient. And so what you want is an undyed goat hair because once you dye a fiber, what happens too is like if you wet a dye, you run the risk, I've never actually experienced it myself, but better safe than sorry, you run the risk of kind of like leaching the dye out of the fiber. So what you wanna be sure of is that you're using a very resilient natural hair, like goat, uh, like sable, and you wanna make sure that they're undyed if you're gonna be using it with cream or liquid products. So I hope, <laughs> I hope that was clear, it was probably clear as mud. Anyway, so this is the refer number 36 brush, undyed goat hair, so it is safe to use with uh, cream products. So this is great for uh, concealer, which is generally a cream or a liquid. And this blends out concealer so quickly in like a dream. This takes a little bit longer to blend out something like the Clay de Posta Concealer versus this, but it does do it, it does do it. Um, but if you're not adverse to using natural hairs, I would say this one is the way to go, this number 36. It's probably, and I'm so sorry, it's probably sold out at the moment. Refer brushes go very quickly because they're very high quality um, at a lower price point. Uh, so anyway, it, once it does come back in stock, I would definitely get a number 36 brush. Um, two brushes I did wanna mention in regards to concealer are brushes that have a different shape. So maybe you just don't like this angled brush or maybe you feel like you can't really kind of get in there. Um, there are some brushes that I enjoy that are more of like a regular, I don't know, rectangle shape, I guess you could say. They're not angled in any way. And this is the Sonia G Jumbo Concealer Brush. So much like her Jumbo Base Brush, this is a mixture of synthetic and natural hairs. And this I love for concealer, much like the name suggests. I, I think sometimes for makeup artists, because they're doing makeup on other people, sometimes the angle of the bristles really matter. And sometimes maybe this won't be so useful. I mean, I would imagine that it's kind of great for either for yourself or as a makeup artist, but I've just heard that what you use on yourself is most likely gonna be really different than what you use on someone else and how you 
work it on someone else's face. So anyway, I just wanted to mention these. This uh, brush I've mentioned quite a bit. This is a Trish McAvoy brush, and this is Sable Hair, which is one of my all-time favorite natural uh, bristles because it is very, very resilient. When you feel a sable brush, you can think like, oh wow, these bristles are really kind of stiff and hard. But once you glide it, you know, you don't want to poke yourself with a sable brush. They are meant to be like glided along the skin. So, so smooth. And sable hair um, has very large cuticles. So the reason why and sorry, I'm gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent here because this is another thing that I feel like I say often and I'm like, I don't think people understand what I'm saying. Um, natural hairs have cuticles, and, much like our hair. And so it grips onto product a lot better than synthetic hairs. And that's the reason. So depending on the source of the natural hair, it will depend on the actual structure of the hair. So sable hair has very large cuticles, so it holds onto product really, really well. And because of its resiliency, and these are not dyed, uh, you can use sable hair with um, cream products, uh, liquid products, powder products. It's really good for those um, really kind of chunky, PC, metallic eyeshadows. Again, because of those giant cuticles, it just holds on to all of that stuff. And I love, love, love sable hair. And I'll talk about it a little bit more. So this is the Trish McAvoy Deluxe Blender Brush number 55. And it's just, it's such a great, kind of all-purpose brush. I tend to use it as concealer, but you can see that it's kind of big, bigger than the average kind of brush for the under eye area. So it's great if you wanna blend in foundation around your uh, nose. It's great if you have um, like a cream highlight, even a cream blush that you wanna swipe on, not necessarily like blend in, but if you wanna swipe on, it's great for that. It's just a wonderful like all-purpose brush. So this is the Trish McAvoy Deluxe 55. I have been finding this brush a little bit harder to find, so I hope it's still around. I'll link to all of these brushes down below in my description box. Like I said, some of these brushes will probably be out of stock. Some of them, you know, more difficult to find. But anyway, I will link what I can down below. Um, and this jumbo concealer from uh, Sonia G is to me very similar to this, even though it's it's a much smaller size, but I kind of reach for them for the same purposes if I want to apply some like cream products in a small sort of detailed way, work foundation around my nose. So uh, those are my concealer brushes. Next, let's talk about powder brushes. Now um, I have two sets of two different brushes. So the first one I wanna talk about is just round, fluffy powder brushes. These are probably like the workhorse brush in your collection. And I have one favorite synthetic and I have one favorite uh, natural hairbrush. So my favorite synthetic hairbrush is the La Mer powder brush. This brush is incredible. It is so soft. It acts to me, in my mind, it acts like a natural hairbrush because it does kind of hold on to loose powder really, really well. I really like using loose powder versus pressed powder. Pressed powder, I love for its convenience, but my preference has always been loose powder. I feel like once you perfect like how much you can pick up and you really just sort of like dust it on, it looks so beautiful. So here I'm using the La Mer brush and it's, it's just such a good size. It's so big, you can dust product on. Because of its round shape, you can even kind of buff it in a little bit. But because it's so fluffy and it's so big, I really just like to kind of graze it along my skin very, very lightly. So for me, I like using this with loose powder and uh, for like a light dusting, nothing that I want to like work into my skin. Um, so that's the La Mer powder brush. The natural haired brush that I love for pretty much the same reason, just for like a light dusting, uh, a little bit of circular motion, is the Surratt face brush. This is squirrel hair. Squirrel hair is incredibly soft. It is incredibly delicate, so you can only use this with powder products. But man, is it just luxurious. It feels like nothing on the skin. It feels like a whisper and uh, picks up product beautifully. It lays down powder beautifully. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous brush. And Surratt brushes just are so sleek. They're so stunning. I mean, they're just works of art. I love, love, love using Surratt brushes. And just a note on its construction. So because squirrel hair is uh, so soft and so fine and so luxurious that to make it like a little bit more dense so that it's useful. Like any brush that's too floppy, 
usually isn't that useful, at least not in my book. I'm sure there's uses for it, but it's not that useful in terms of just like applying powder just for everyday use. And so you'll notice here on the La Mer brush, this is the, the ferrule. The ferrule just goes straight up. And so, you know, the bristles here, there's plenty of bristles. It keeps them nice and stiff. And these are synthetic hairs. And I'm just showing these as an example, but this pretty much goes, <laughs> goes for all brushes. But at the top of this ferrule, do you see how it curves in a little bit? Let me hold it up. So this just goes straight up and this curves in a little bit. So this shape to the ferrule just really kind of brings the hairs in. It just kind of forces them to kind of behave and it gives you this nice control over the product. So uh, my two favorite uh, powder brushes. Two other powder brushes I wanted to mention, these are both natural haired, um, but I wanted to mention these because these have a flatter shape. Both of these are have a round shape to them. Um, these two are flat. So this one by Sonogy is the Face Pro brush. I'm mentioning these flatter shaped brushes because I find them just a little bit more versatile. They're great for powder, but they're also great for bronzer. Um, they're great for dusting things away. Like if you just want to sweep things away, uh, maybe you've put a little too much powder on, happens to me all the time. It's great to just like sweep things away. I don't find it quite as easy with a round brush. It just feels, uh, doesn't feel like I'm sweeping anything away. It feels like I'm just buffing it in even more. Um, so I really love Sonia G's Face Pro for that. And it's got this nice angle to it. So again, it feels really comfortable in the hand. And I believe these are dyed and undyed, a mixture of dyed and undyed goat hair. This one is brush number one from Beautylish's Yano series. And all of these are, I believe, squirrel hair. And if I misspeak about anything, because I've got a lot of brushes here and I try and remember everything, but sometimes it's difficult. But anyway, if I misspeak about anything, I'll correct myself down below in the description box. Um, but this Yano brush, again, I believe is squirrel hair. It's so soft and it's got this pinch ferrule, so it is flat. So I do like it. Again, for much the same reason as the Face Pro. I think it's very versatile. I can use it for powder. I can use it for swiping away things. I can use it for bronzer. But because this is so much softer than the Face Pro, you know, I use it for uh, loose powders is really great. It's gonna give you basically a lighter application than uh, the Sonia G Face Pro brush uh, in simplest terms. So love those two face brushes, they're just, mind-blowingly good. All right, next up, let's talk about bronzer brushes. And you guys have seen me use this bronzer brush endlessly. This is the Refer number 22 brush. It's just a big, old, fluffy, undyed goat hair brush. It's slightly pinched, uh, but it's just, it's so chubby in every way. It's pretty wide, it's pretty thick. It's got this big, beautiful bulb of hair at the top. And I, I just love it. And it gives you just this really nice kind of even application for bronzer. I think if you want a really strong kind of cut kind of contour, this brush probably isn't for you. Of course, you can use this for powder as well. It's that big. Actually, let me hold it up next to the La Mer. It is, it is that big. So you can use this for powder as well. I just like it for uh, bronzer because uh, it does have a little bit of a pinch ferrule there. And I don't mind getting bronzer kind of everywhere. I don't usually do like super severe cut looks. So I love, I just love this brush. It just makes me happy. Every time I pull out this brush, I just think about how much I love the shape, how wonderful it is to use, how soft it feels, um, but how effective it is. Goat hair by far is, and this is probably why it's used so much, it's one of the most versatile natural hairs that you can use in a makeup brush. Like I said, it's kind of middle of the road. And so it's very, very soft, but it's also very, very effective. So the refer number 22, and then Sonia G's Niji Pro. Now I wanted to mention her Sculpt One, but she's really cut back on a lot of her fan brushes and she's come out with some other ones. And this is very, very similar to her Sculpt One brush. And that was, uh, one of the first brushes that I used from Sonia G that was such a game changer. I had never been a fan of fan of fan brushes. <laughs> I've never been a fan of fan brushes um, up until that point, but she made it so dense that it actually did something. And I think up until that point, I was using fan brushes that were really like fluffy. And I was like, what is, this is not doing anything. It's not even getting the product where I want it. It's not blending anything in. And then I tried Sonia G. So anyway, uh, this Niji Pro is very, very similar. It's just a really big, densely packed fan brush. It's so beautiful for um, a slightly more 
kind of a severe application versus the Refer 22, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, and it blends beautifully because it is just so dense. So what I like to do is just sort of like add product in like a line and then just like blend it out. So beautiful. And then the only synthetic hair brush that I have found to come even close to like a really, really effective fan brush is this uh, fan brush from Kogendo. And I believe they have a fan brush on their site that's slightly different from this. I think the hairs are just a little bit longer. So you're just gonna get a little bit of a softer application than the one that I'm holding up. And I do actually uh, demo this with the Jones Road Bronzer in Dusty Pink. Um, this applies and blends out beautifully. It's very impressive for a synthetic hair brush. Very, very soft, but you can see how much more, um, I don't wanna say flimsy, that's the wrong word, more flexibility with these hairs. Um, these are just a little bit stiffer. So with that in mind, I just thought this could be good for application, but it's not gonna be really good for like really blending in the product. But this was really good, it surprised me. Kogendo brushes are really, really well made and I really, really like the synthetic hairs, fibers that they use. So anyway, this is a really good synthetic option to these natural haired brushes. Okay, I have a lot of uh, cream brushes here. So I'm gonna start with the synthetic haired one. Um, I have one and this is the Smashbox Cream Cheek Brush. Now I got this when the, do you remember the Zoeva? I think it's the 110 brush. I have one, oh here, is this it? Yes, the Zoeva 110 face shape brush. I don't think, I don't know if they don't make this anymore or if it's just not available in the US, um, but Zoeva is a European brand. And so this was a very difficult, difficult brush to find. And I remember my friends and I kept looking for like a dupe of this. And this was like the closest that we could find that was kind of easily uh, or readily available to us. And this is the Smashbox uh, Cream Cheek Brush. And you can see it's it's not quite as rounded as the Zoeva. It, it's rounded, but it's, you know, you can actually see how it's like splayed out more on the sides. Anyway, I really love this brush for uh, just cream cheek products. It is sort of a medium size. So I feel like you can use it for bronzer, contour, blush, even highlight if you want. And uh, Lisa Eldridge used to use this brush all the time for foundation. So if you are really limited, let's say, in some space or on your vanity or when you're traveling, you just don't wanna bring a ton of brushes, uh, this is a really good one to bring if you're into cream products because yeah, you can use this pretty much for anything. Um, so this is a really great one. Um, and then the other three that I wanna mention all are kind of a mixture. So the mini base brush from Sonia G, very, very similar in shape to the Smashbox as you can see but I just find this to be just a little bit more of a pleasant use. It is just a little bit softer, and I feel like it just blends product more quickly and more evenly. So that's the mini base. And then we have the classic base from Sonia G. And this is really great, I think, for cream uh, bronzer because it's just a little bit bigger. Actually, let me hold up the two next to each other. It's just a little bit bigger. And so you just cover more surface area a little bit more quickly. This is also great for foundation. Uh, so this is another good one. And then I wanted to mention this Westman Atelier powder brush. So this is her powder brush, but I think if you use like a liquid blush, like one that doesn't come in a pot. So for my example, I was using number four in the Clay de Peau, uh cream blush. Um, if you use one maybe that comes out in a tube or um, is like on a doe foot applicator, I really love using like a light feathery kind of brush that just sort of adds it onto your cheeks like a little bit of a, of a whisper instead of something so dense. I really like the idea of using something light and fluffy and I really like the Westman Atelier uh, brush for this. But really any brush that is cream or liquid safe in this shape, which is a fairly common shape, like a, like a fairly common uh, blush shape, it's great for liquid blushes, I find, because I just think it applies it in a really sort of like airbrushed way. You know how airbrush applies things like, almost like, like it's blowing like dust over the surface. It's the same sort of way with like brushes like these instead of a dense brush. Anyway, uh, let me keep, let me keep going. Otherwise it's gonna take forever. And then powder blushes. So uh, I tend to use different brushes um, depending on the formula of the product. So blushes, Generally, I feel like in my mind, there's like the soft, just sort of pressed powder version, um, or there's the harder sort of baked gel powder kind of version. Um, 
I'm trying to think of examples, like the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate blushes. Those are just pressed powders. They're very soft. Um, and then what's a, what's a baked uh, gel powder, like the RMS blushes, although those aren't too hard, but that's a, that's a baked version. Anyway, um, when it comes to the softer pressed powder um, blushes, I like to use a very soft, uh, gentle kind of brush. And so this Surat cheek brush um, is perfect for that. Again, we've got squirrel hair here. So it just picks up this beautiful, like light dusting of the powder and then just applies it like a whisper on your cheeks. It's really, really incredible. So I really love using this with like softer powders. And then for a blush that I find just a little bit harder to pick up, I love the Cheek Pro brush from uh, Sonia G. This is very innocent looking because you think, okay, we've got some dyed goat hair. So again, just use this with powder products. So this is dyed goat hair. Um, it looks real soft, but she's packed in a lot of hairs in this brush. So it's a lot denser than it looks. It's so, so soft because it's uh, natural hair, um, but because it's so packed in there and because it's so dense, it really picks up harder to pick up products very, very easily. So that's why I love this brush. There was only one brush that I could come up with to say that is the one. Again, like if all of my brushes were to disappear, what's the one highlight brush I would run out and get? And that's the Sonia G Sculpt 4 brush. Again, she's the one that turned me on to fan brushes in general. And uh, the, the kind of typical fan brush that we see for highlight, it's that really light, do I have one? Yes, I'm holding up, which one? This is Wayne Goss's number 15 brush. So this is more of like a, a, a fan brush that I see more people use uh, for highlight because it just, it just sort of dusts the powder over your cheeks. I am not personally a fan of applying highlight in that way. I don't like it sitting on top of my skin. Um, I really like burnishing it and really getting it into uh, my cheeks there. And I think that will probably bring down a little bit of the shine, but you're gonna end up with a really, really gorgeous sort of glossy high satin shine versus just this kind of like metallic micro glitter sort of situation. So that's why I love the Sonia G fan brushes because they're so dense. So picks up any kind of highlight, pressed powder, uh, baked gelée powder, um, and then what I'll do is I'll dust it on, and then I'll turn the brush, and then I will work it in, just really, really work it into my skin, and you end up getting just a, such a smooth, smooth highlight. It's gorgeous. And I'm using the new uh, Charlotte Tilbury highlighter, by the way. I'll list everything that I have on my face down below, but this is the highlight that I have on my face in the Champagne Glow. And I remember when I first applied it, I was like, okay, that looks nice. But once I burnished this highlight into my skin, I was like, yes, 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 just yes. So that is the one highlight brush that I would recommend to everyone, Sculpt 4 from Sonia G. I'm not quite as organized with my eye brushes that I was with my face brushes in terms of category because just because, I don't know. There's just, there's a lot of brushes. I use them for different reasons and whatever. So I'll try and make this succinct. All right, let's go with my one sort of like workhorse kind of brush. And this is the Sonia G Worker One brush. I have, I have so many of these. I think I have four of these. Here's two. Um, but what I love about this is it's, um, at first glance, basically it's shaped like a flat shader brush. It has a pinched ferrule. Uh, this is dyed goat hair, so I would only use it with uh, powder products. And uh, what I love about it is that it's actually a pretty fat shader brush. So when I turn it to its side, it's not that flat. And so I find this brush to be the most versatile. Like if I can only bring one brush with me on a trip or something, this is usually the brush that I grab. So it works like a flat shader, so you can just lay down products really easily. But I feel like I can also like blend and buff with this brush because it is so chubby. And it's Sonia G, so the quality is there. These um, hairs are so, so soft. They never irritate my very sensitive eyelids. And yeah, and goat hair, so grips product really, really nicely. Um, so that's kind of like my overall sort of uh, most versatile sort of favorite eye brush. All right, next let's talk about cream eyeshadows. You guys know how much I love cream eyeshadows. You guys know how much I love doing like a one and done cream eyeshadow look. So easy, so pretty. Um, today I actually use the Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl 
it is underneath a couple of powder shadows because I wanted to demo some more brushes. But um, you guys have probably <laughs> heard me talk about this brush a gazillion times, but this is the Westman Atelier Baby Blender Brush. So this is my synthetic haired uh, brush pick for cream eyeshadow. She actually uses this for the face. I think she uses this to apply highlight, but I just love just like going in <laughs> going into a cream eyeshadow and just blending it out all over. And I'll do it for way too long just because it feels so good. Um, but I just think it is perfect, perfect for that. Just a one and done cream eyeshadow. It's perfectly domed. It's just such a great shape and it's like the perfect density. It's not too stiff. You can see like the, the hairs are, are soft and they're flexible. So it's great for the eyes. And then my favorite natural synthetic hair mix is the Sonia G Soft Concealer. So this is her concealer brush, but it is uh, a round ferrule. And I personally, I like it for cream shadow. So I use it much in the same way as the Baby Blender brush. They're very similar. The Baby Blender is a little bit bigger than the soft concealer. But yeah, I would say I use these two brushes for cream shadow the most. All right, let's talk about my flat shader eyeshadow brush picks. I have three. They're all different natural hair, but I don't have any synthetic haired brushes. Um, so I apologize, but my first pick would be the Refer number one brush. This is just, I think like the perfect shader. Not too big, not too small. It has a nice rounded top there. It is undyed goat hair, so you can use this with cream or with powder. It's just such a great like workhorse brush. And again, just the perfect shape. Like there's just nothing wrong <laughs> with this shape. So that's the Refer number one. The next brush I, absolutely love. This is definitely one of those brushes, the first ones I'd go if all of my brushes disappeared. This is from Chikahoto. This is their eyeshadow brush. This is part of their Z line. So this is squirrel hair. Incredibly, incredibly soft. I mean, this feels like a little, like a little paw, just applying makeup to your eyes. It's so, so luxurious feeling. Um, I'm just going to hold it up to the refer one just to show you that it is a chubby brush. It is wider and it's also a little bit thicker. And so again, because I just love a one and done shadow, or if you like, like kind of just like laying down something over your entire eyelid, this is so great for that. It just, I mean, it feels like a dream on your eyes, but because it's natural haired, it does pick up a beautiful amount of product and just lays it down just beautifully, just evenly and beautifully. I love, love, love this brush. And then, the last brush I want to mention is the W23 brush from Isam. This is sable hair. This is the brush that I go for if I'm dealing with really chunky kind of eyeshadow, eyeshadow that has micro glitters, eyeshadows that when you take a more typical brush and all of the eyeshadows just kind of sitting on top of the brush, it's not actually like the brush isn't actually grabbing it. That's when I go for this brush. This sable hair will actually grab all of those little particles and hold on to them so that when you apply it, it will apply it nice and evenly, not just like ploop, like plop it onto your eyes with like a ton of fallout. You're not gonna get that with a sable hair brush. It's just gonna grip onto all of that and then you're gonna be able to, um, you know, apply it evenly. This is also really great for those wet dry eyeshadows because you can use sable hair uh, with cream and liquid products. So when you wet an eyeshadow, sometimes it can be kind of like a little clumpy or whatever. This to the rescue because it just sort of like spreads out everything just really, really beautifully. When you take a close look at like sable hair brushes, this will probably remind you the most of like a paintbrush. So it's really like great for just like laying down color. Oh, it's just fantastic. So that's the W23 from Isom. And just for size comparison, here it is next to the refer. So very similar size. All right, in terms of blenders, uh, let's start with the Sonia G. So the Blender Pro, this is undyed goat hair, and it's much like the Refer number one uh, shader brush. It really is just like the most unoffensive blender brush. It is just great shape, great size, the hair length is great, the shape at the top is wonderful. Like it is your workhorse blender brush. And again, because it's Sony G, the quality is just so great. It's so soft on the skin, yet it's so, so effective. Um, so this is one that I always, always reach for. If it's clean, it's like the first brush that I grab. So that's the Blender Pro. Um, another brush that I have been loving, this is uh, a bit bigger than the Blender Pro. So this is the BK Beauty A503, another Angie Hot and Flashy 
uh, collab. I love that entire set. I mean, it is, it's become indispensable. Uh, but anyway, this is the A503 and it's bigger and it's, it's fluffier. So if you're looking for a lighter application um, or if you have just more area to cover, this is the one that you wanna definitely go for. I use this today just to add a little bit of dimension to the outer corners of my eyes. And I was using the um, Clé de Peau Duo that I love and I was using this shade here. Um, and I just kinda add a little bit to my outer corners and it's just great. It's like a nice little light dusting of it because again, this is so fluffy. So that's the A503 and then this is, I wanna say like my workhorse kind of blender brush because it's a little rougher than the uh, Blender Pro from Sonia G. So this is the Isam S33. This is also um, dyed goat hair, but it's a little bit rougher. So if I feel like I'm working with a shadow that maybe is just a little bit difficult to blend, maybe it's one of those like thick formulas, you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of pasty when you put it on, it sticks. Um, I like to go in with this brush because this is one of those workhorse brushes. This will blend out anything, anything. So this is the S33 from Isom. And then in terms of small blender brushes, this brush, this is the mini booster brush from Sonia G. This brush was, I think, revolutionary. So here we have like a mini version of a blender brush, essentially, right? It just looks like, oh, okay, it's smaller, it's just for more detail work. And I remember thinking, why did she call it a mini booster? But there's something about the way she packed these bristles and the shape of the brush. It really boosts up any sort of pigment. It is, it packs a punch, basically. And so you pick this up and you think it's just gonna be a mini blender, but it it's almost like a definer brush. It really will add a lot of pigment to a small amount of space very, very quickly. So if you are looking to maybe just deepen up like the outer corner, or maybe just lighten up like your inner corner or whatever it is that you wanna do, but you wanna like really pack a punch in a small space, try the mini booster. It is really, really great for that. But if you are looking for just a blender brush in a more diminutive size, try the um, another Angie Hot and Flashy BK Beauty A502. So this is really just a small blender brush. So if you're looking for like kind of a lighter, fluffier application in just like a smaller space, and I know Angie designed these for uh, like hooded eyelids. So if you just wanna, you know, kind of get up in there and just, you know, blend out some stuff, add a little bit of pigment in a light light touch kind of way, this is great for that. So this is the A502. All right, and in terms of eyeliner brushes, um, my one of my all-time favorites is from Isom. This is the T05 brush. So this is a stamping brush. So this is a brush where you just kind of wiggle into the pigment. And I use it here with the Surat Brun Noir um, eyeshadow, which is like a very dark brown. And you basically just wanna press it where you wanna apply it. So I'm just pressing it on top of my lashes and then I'll go underneath my lashes and press some like right into the base of my eyelashes. Um, and so this isn't a brush where you're sweeping, going back and forth blending or anything. This is really just a stamping brush. And I really, really like that when I'm applying eyeshadow as eyeliner because then you don't have that fallout because you're picking up really dark, deep pigmented eyeshadows, almost like cake liner, and just pressing it in there without kind of wiggling. Cause as soon as you wiggle, you'll probably get some fallout. So uh, I really like this T05 brush. It's great for that. Um, and this brush is kind of like in between. This is the Smoky Eyeliner Brush from Bobbi Brown. So I like to use this kind of in a stamping way, but you can also wiggle this too and really um, smoke out eyeliners if you want or smoke out eyeshadows. Um, this has a very dense but rounded edge and it's, it's tiny. Let me hold it up next to the T05. It's a tiny, tiny brush. So you can really kind of like work you know, like the outer corner, if you're trying to smoke that out a little bit more, you can really work in there or work the lower lash line really easily. I really like this brush. I've come to really love this brush. So that's from Bobbi Brown. And these are both synthetic haired brushes. Okay, one last eye brush. Although I, I feel like I'm forgetting brushes. I mean, there's just, there's so many, I have so many brushes. Anyway, one last eye brush. And if you guys have been with me a long time, you know what brush I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold up. But this is the most unique and the most special brush and it just blew my mind when I first used it. So this is the Isom W36 brush. This is sable hair. It has a round ferrule, but it's angled. 
I believe this is a crease brush, or this is why it was designed or how it was designed, and it was meant to work in the crease, and it's great for that. Really, really great if you wanna just like add like a nice kind of accent, a contour in there. Actually, I'm, I'm doing it right now. Add a nice contour into uh, like your crease area, right? But when I started using it, I was like, gosh, this is such a great shape. So what I like to use this brush for is to accent my outer corner. And what I'll do is I'll pick up some product, I'll lay it right down on the outer corner of my eye at an angle where I want, and then I just flick it towards the center of my eye. And it just, whoop, you get instant like line blending in. Just, it's so perfect for that. I love it. Absolutely love it. So that is the W36, and I did it today with the Syrah Brown Noir um, eyeshadow. This this brush is magical, magical. I love this. So that's the W36 brush. Okay, and last but not least, I was saving this, even though we're going back to face brushes, because I actually wanted to demo this for you. I like demoing this for some reason. So I've got the Sonia G Buffer Pro brush. It was originally called the Face One brush, uh, and it looked like this. It had the untapered handle. So this was the original. Um, it's the same exact head, but she's uh, renamed it to the Buffer Pro and it has the tapered handle now. So the Buffer Pro, and I, you know, I, I don't think there's a true, true substitute for this Buffer Pro. However, uh, for synthetic haired version of it, there is the Buff and Blur from Chantecaille. This is a very close second place to the Buffer Pro. So if you prefer synthetic haired brushes, I would definitely give the Chantecaille Buff and Blur brush uh, a chance. So what I like to use these brushes for um, is for finishing powder. And I've talked about this quite a bit, so bear with me. Um, but the Guerlain Meteorites is one of my favorite finishing powders. And I didn't like this powder until I learned how to use it. So I'm going to open this up. And this is in the shade uh, 2 Light Claire. And what I like to do is with the cap on, I just shake it up a little bit. I turn it over, shake it up a little bit, turn it back over. And what happens is, you're left with you're left with some powder on the cap and you're left with a lot of powder uh, around the pearls so I'll take the buffer pro and I'll press it onto the cap if I don't have enough I'll press it onto the pearls but it's important to turn it upside down otherwise all the powder is going to be sitting like underneath so with that amount of powder what I like to do is stamp it and I'm gonna stamp it down here because I don't have anything else going on here I have highlighter here and then I like to buff it in so this is like the ultimate burnishing. And it just makes my skin look like marble, just smooth with like just the slightest bit of satin. And if you don't buff these meteorites, you're gonna have a lot of like micro glitter. It's gonna look very powdery. It's gonna look like it's sitting on your face. You have to buff it in. That's how you'll get like this really nice, sorry. Never know if I'm like tilting my head up enough or too much, um, but you'll just get this beautiful, beautiful, smooth, slightly satin sheen to your skin. It's the most perfect like finishing step. Um, so that's what I love using the Buffer Pro for. Like I said, this is really great as like a second option to it. So I'm gonna use the Chantecaille Buff and Blur now. I'm gonna dip it in to the pearls. I'm gonna do the same thing. and buff. Now, this is actually a denser, stiffer brush. So I like to make sure I'm really just gla like grazing it over my skin. I'm not like getting in there too much. Otherwise, I think you're just gonna start moving stuff underneath. But here it is with the Chantecaille. <laughs> Sorry. And here it is with the Buffer Pro. What I also like to use these brushes for is like baked powders. So like the Dior powder is baked, the Chantecaille um, Perfect Blur powder, that's baked. And what I like to do is just kind of uh, work the brush into the product because it's kind of hard to pick up. Like you're not gonna be able to pick it up with a brush like this Yano brush. And just by like grazing it on top, you're not gonna pick up any product. You wanna like work this brush in. You'll see the product on the brush and then I like pressing it in. I think those powders are really great for like larger pores. So I usually just, you know, dig it in and then I'll press it into that area. I won't like buff it, but I'll really, really press it in, press it in. 
and it just makes your pores like disappear. It's incredible. So that's it. I think that is it for this video. Like I said, I'm sure I have forgotten some brushes that I use often that I really, really love, but all the brushes that I talked about today, I really, really do love. And I know that was a lot of brushes and I know it can be very, very overwhelming, but I would definitely start with uh, whether you wanna use natural hair brushes or synthetic hair brushes, that will just cut down on your choices. And of course you can mix and match too, like I always mix and match, but that could be a good starting point, you know, kind of figuring out uh, which you prefer and, and what, what you wanna start with. I would also definitely go with brushes that are most versatile, like this Sonia G Face Pro brush. Like I said, this is great for powder. This is great for contour. This is great for bronzer. It's great for sweeping away stuff. You could even use it for blush because it, it is pinched, it is narrow, you can use it for blush. So this is a really great versatile brush. You can use it for so many things. Um, and then there's brushes like the Cream Cheek brush from Smashbox or the Mini Base brush from Sonia G. This is great for any kind of cream product. It's great for foundation. Like I mentioned, Lisa Eldridge used to use that Zoeva um, face shape brush all the time for foundation. So that would be great for pretty much any cream or liquid product. So I think starting with brushes that are very versatile, I think that's always a really good strategy. Oh, and like the Sony G Worker One brush, because like I said, it's it's a flat shader, but it's also, it's also pretty chubby, you know what I mean? So you can really blend with this as well. All right, enough of me rambling. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Don't forget the Beautylish gift card event is coming up. So Sonia G brushes are included. Chikahoto brushes are included. The Yano series um, brushes are included. Definitely check that out. It is coming up very, very, very soon. <laughs> very soon. And subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.